Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Melissa. Thank you so much for joining me. I am getting set up to film a fun little, just quick little repotting. I have been meaning to get this plant on a pole. I think it's time. I've been dealing with so much like raw issues and just like, I, I have some sad plants I really need to repot, but I want to, I don't know, I'm feeling kind of down a little bit with the whole situation. So I want to do like a fun uplifting video, just like a fun repot, I guess. Before I get started and set my camera up, I want to show you my bend that I did, my cart my repotting cart because you guys know i normally drag a bunch of stuff out on this table <laughs> it gets a mess everywhere but look what i did i have a repotting cart this is everything that i need to do any of my plant care repotting you name it it will be right here beside me when i repot i'll just take everything that i need for the video put it onto the table and then we will be set. I am just so stinking excited about this cart. It's gonna make my life so much easier and if I'm doing a repotting outside, I'll just take it outside with me. And how easy is that? Literally everything that I need is right here. I'm back, we are all set. I have my cart, my soil mix, my mat, my water, my plant. I think I'm all set. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I'm really super excited. So let me show you the plant. Is this one? Looky, looky at that growth. Look at how gorgeous. I'm debating on whether or not to cut the leaf off, the original leaf. I don't know, I'm gonna see how it looks like on a pole and then I will determine it. So I just watered this plant yesterday. The soil is very wet. And I wanted to make sure the plant was hydrated before I go to unpot it and mess with it a little bit. It just reduces shock. You, you don't really want to repot a stressed or dehydrated plant. It just induces possibly more shock. So we are gonna do him on a thick leaf pole, of course, cause I love them. I'm trying to think what size pole to start this plant on. What size? I'm either debating between the small or the medium. It has three vines growing. I'm not sure how thick this plant gets, like how thick the vine gets. If it's anything like my Marble Queen, that is a thick vine. Uh, I think I might do the small. I thought I had opened. So this is what they look like when they come to you in this packaging. The small you get 10. This is their 2.0. They actually told me they're releasing a 3.0 pole, which I don't know what the 3.0 is. This one um, is just like their medium, except it has three across instead of four like little squares. And it's a little bit shorter. I think the 3.0 version that they're coming out with maybe opens from the front instead of the back like these ones. So that'll be cool. I just love these poles. It's just so easy. And I love that you can stack them. They're just so easy to fold and make. I don't know if I'll ever make new wire poles. I think I'm done with wire. I'll keep the, obviously I have a lot on wire. So those one will, those poles will always be wire, but any new ones that I'm making, I'm not putting them on a wire pole anymore because it's just too much work. And I like these ones a lot better. So we have that bent into our little shape. And so we just fill with moss. The soil flap is here on the bottom. So you wanna make sure that goes into the soil to help it from coming out. And then the top connector flaps are here up top. Yeah, and you can just like grab a pole, fill it with moss and you're done. It takes hardly any time. I'm obsessed that I have this cart now, you guys. I am literally obsessed. I don't know what I was thinking. And now I have so much work room on my table and not having like stuff everywhere. So this is just regular water, just moistening the moss. Now you can either pre-make these poles and fill with moss first, or you can add it to the top, whatever's easiest for you. I find building them first is easier for me. 
and I like to just fill them with moss. And you want to leave some room at the bottom so that you can fill with soil because that's going to go into your nursery pot. You don't want moss like underneath the soil basically. I may have gotten too much moss, that's okay. I think I'll just start with this one layer and I have a feeling this plant like once it starts attaching that's why I want to do it sooner than later it's pretty small but I want to go ahead and attach it just because I want it to start growing into the moss because getting those aerial roots in the moss is really going to allow the plant to anchor in and really just take a hold and start growing Yeah, so I just stuffed like that and then the little clips you just connect into one another. It's literally so stinking cute. <laughs> this small pole is so cute. Look at that. I love it. I think the size will be good for this plant. So cute. I'm obsessed already. So when you're starting a plant on the pole, the big thing for these ones is you can start them somewhat small. I wouldn't really start them any smaller than a four inch just because you are risking potentially overwatering depending on the substrate that you're using. I like to use these clear ones just so that I can monitor the roots. So this plant is currently in roughly, I would say this one's a little bit smaller. There is a lot of soil in here though. And I would say I figure out which one I want to use. I have several different brands. So these ones I like the repot me ones because they're more a little bit more taller. I think I'm gonna start with this one. This one I think might be a four inch repot me pot. It's a little bit smaller than the current pot, but again, this is a I feel like when I first got this plant, I'm like, wow, it is in such a big pot for just a tiny cutting. So that'll be good. And this fits in here just fine. So it'll be able to stay in this four inch for a little while. I think that's a good starting point. You don't want it too big, but you don't want it too small. So I would say when you're just starting out with a small plant or cuttings, I would probably stick around a four inch. And then as the plant grows, you may eventually need to like repot it up to a six inch because the taller they get, the more wobbly they are. It's just with any pole that you do. So you need like a heavy supported base. So you need a larger pot to support the weight once it gets bigger up top. And you may eventually have to set this in like a heavier ceramic and add a garden stake to the back of this just so that it doesn't wobble as it gets taller. So because this is going on a pole, I uh, wanna make sure I have an aerated mix. I do want to remove a good portion of this, but I don't want to stress the plant. So we're gonna see how the root system looks like. When you are putting cuttings on a pole, just remember the, if you're doing just cuttings, they're gonna take a little while to establish before an actual small plant would. Cause this is gonna to continue to climb. It's not really gonna to shock too much and they're not cut as to where you have like a mid cut and it has to take a while to get energy to push a new growth and also focus on growing roots cause you just like repotted it. So a mid cut on a pole is gonna take a, a good amount of time to start growing. So if you're wanting more immediate growth, I would start with a small plant. And if you're patient and you don't really care too much, then you can definitely start with um, cuttings. I honestly could just use the same pot, honestly. It's actually a really good pot. I wonder what kind of pot this is. I do like the size of that one. I mean, we have a decent root system. See, like all this was literally extra soil. 
this here. I'm gently moving some away. You don't have to go crazy and remove everything. I wouldn't like rinse the roots. I wouldn't do like anything crazy. So I have, so like I said, I have three vines growing. The vine here, the main one, has a couple little aerial roots sticking out. I don't know if you're gonna be able to make that out or not. So that is what we want against the moss. So when we plant this against the pole, we're gonna try and like, right, it was in the pot like this, but we're gonna try and plant it so that it's a little turned like that so that that node can start rooting and growing that little aerial root into the moss. And once it kind of roots into the moss, it's gonna help like anchor and it's gonna start promoting it to grow better and bigger and stuff. So you just wanna kind of plant it to where most of the nodes can get against the moss. And that's where using, I like using little clips to kind of help secure them. These little pins don't really stick in these clear poles that well. I use these for my um, regular wire poles. You could use like um, any kind of clip that you want to use. I think I might use this green little butterfly clip. <laughs> It'll look really cute. So that is our root system. That is a decent amount of roots. I feel like that's a decent mix. I could definitely save that. I mean, nothing was rotting in it and I felt like the plant was happy in it. I could probably save it for like a repotting and mix some of my own in there for a different plant instead of just tossing it. And then I'm just gonna use the clean pot just cause I'm weird with like using clean pots. So mine has a little lip in there. Do you see that round thing? So I put this in the center where it's actually in there, in the center of the round thing, the pole. So I always center it and then I get questions on, well, how do you do the roots if you, like, I guess most people put their poles in the back like that and then they plant it to make room for the roots, but I don't do that because you need to have stability because when moss is really wet, it gets heavy. And when cuttings climb and get bigger leaves, it gets heavy. So if this isn't stable down here at the pot, you're gonna have a wobbly pole. So that's why it's always important for me is I center the pot. Cause center is where it's most stable. And I kind of just work the roots around the pot is how I do it. So this is my new moss pole mix here. Super excited to use it. Look at that goodness. It is amazing. And again, I'll make sure this video is linked because I just made this video. So I'm gonna fill the bottom part that we didn't fill with the substrate. to just take the empty pot and then with it being centered and make sure you have the soil flaps that are pressed down. Um, so I just put it right in the center, get it in there and then flip it over. So you wanna get those soil flaps down for stability. And I'm just gonna do a tiny little layer here on the bottom. And so with our cutting, like I said, we're gonna try and tilt it this way because that's where the vines are growing. They're growing that way. So I'm gonna plant this a little, try to plant it a little like that. And then the roots, I just maneuver around the pole. Like I'll, it's centered, but I kind of tilt it this way to get it in here. And then we'll just kind of maneuver the roots a little bit around the back. So I have three nodes growing, or do I have four? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, snap. I have four, I only thought I had three. Maybe I should have used the bigger pole now, oh well. So I'm just gonna 
kind of try and just center this to where that tallest vine is anchoring. So like kind of like that. I don't know if you can see that well, my finger there. So all the other vines that will grow, I'm just going to have to kind of turn and anchor to the moss so that they can attach in. Because right now I only have one node up against the moss. And I'm just going to use this clip to clip the vine here, down here. I can get it in there. Let's see. All right, I might need to use an orchid clip. It's a little bit smaller. So I can get that down in there. And I can position it a little bit more too once I um, get this plant like fully repotted. But I'm just going to anchor it. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to anchor it like that just um, for now. And then you want to make sure, I actually might need to lower that a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to lower it one, one more clip down because you want to make sure the roots get buried um, under the soil. I'm actually going to turn it a little bit. I'm going to use one more. I'm going to try and turn it to where I can get another node kind of facing. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clip this leaf. It's getting in the way, the original leaf. It's time to say goodbye. We're just going to go ahead and cut it off, you guys. It's done. Goodbye, leaf. It was on its way out. All right, so with the roots down, so we're going to take these other two nodes and face it against the moss and use another clip and clip one of these. It's really hard to do at first, but once it starts climbing more, you'll be able to clip it better. But that's sort of what I did there. I have a clip on this side over here, right there, and then I have a clip right here. So I got a couple nodes against the vine. And so the roots are down far enough in the pot. The roots kind of here, the moss isn't in the pot at all. And then the roots are kind of tucked around the front and the back. So all I'm gonna do is fill up with our chunky mix. I'm so excited to get this on a pole, you guys. I just, I'm so happy. Well, that's a big piece of charcoal. Can't wait for it to start climbing. It'll, it'll do a little bit of an adjustment, you know, since I did up pot it, it's gonna take just a tiny bit of time to recover. And actually it may even do, oh shoot, it may even do just fine. It, some plants, when I repot them, don't seem bothered at all. Like, I'll repot them and they don't stress. They keep on growing like nothing else happened. And then some plants take a hit and kind of shock and stress more easily. This is my fertilizer here, the Dynamite Select. I think this was a good pot size. It's not overwhelming. It is going to form around the pole and grow some like new healthy strong roots in the mix while it's growing new roots into the pole. What you wanna to try to do is just make sure you get this front section kind of press down because sometimes when you use a chunky mix it 
leaves a lot of air gaps, so you really want to make sure you're compressing all the air gaps. Kind of filling that in a little bit more. And sometimes there's like a big chunky piece on top. I just put it back in my 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 bin. Oh my goodness, this is so stinking cute. I'm obsessed. So this vine where they had cut is sticking out right here. It's just the um, piece of the extra stem. I'm gonna cut that off so it's not sticking out. There. That looks so cute, look. And you can see all the soil in there, how good that looks. So our moss is moist. The only thing that we have to do is, I of course like to water in Super Thrive after every repotting. I just think it helps. You know, it doesn't hurt. So if you can give your plants extra nutrients and vitamins, after a repot, if it's going to help reduce shock, why not use it, you know? If it can benefit them. And then we're just going to water it in. So the moss is wet, so we're watering the soil. And it's going to drip. I'm just giving a good water. I did just water this plant, but it's okay. It'll be fine. I just want to um, moisten the substrate because I don't want the roots to dry out. And as long as you let the extra drain, it'll be fine. There's enough airflow in this mix that we're not gonna be rotting this plant. And then all I do is I just monitor the moss and once it's dry, I take my water bottle like this and then I'll water it from like the top and here. And I do have one extra vine out here. That's a fourth vine I didn't know I had. So it's probably gonna grow out this way. So once it grows a bit more, I just have to like anchor it to the pole a bit. And as they climb more, you can kind of clip it and reposition the vines against the moss how you wanna position them. And sometimes I use clear tape like this too. Um, this is grafting tape. It's, it's kind of like saran wrap and I will like secure the vines around that way. But this plant seems to have a little bit of like tight internodal spacing. So between each node, that piece of stem is a little bit shorter. So sometimes tape doesn't always work for these and that's why a clip is better. Now I just have to find a cute little pot to sit this in. Or if I don't want to do a pot, I can just use like a saucer tray and that'll be it. I'm going to sit it over here with the other ones. It's so stinking cute. I actually might put this in my cabinet because I have several in there that need an extension. And once I extend it, they can't stay in my cabinet. So since this one is pretty small, I might just move it to my cabinet so I can have room for a plant out of my cabinet. So yeah, it's so stinking cute. I honestly, I can't wait to watch it climb more. This plant is gonna do great. It's gonna do phenomenal. The only thing that I forgot to use is my mycorrhizae, which I meant to use, but that's okay. It'll do fine. I actually wanna um, try this root mana from Thickly too. I haven't used it yet. It's just a soil conditioning fertilizer enhancer. You can use it with fertilizer to improve uptake of nutrients, or you can use it for rooting of cuttings and um, acclimatizing, acclimatizing um, imported plants. So I do wanna try that out and see how I like it. Sad that the original leaf is gone, but that's okay. It's gonna be cute. It's cute, I'm obsessed. I'm happy that I got growth because I was worried that you know, I did um, unbox this plant on Etsy and, 
or on Etsy. I unboxed this plant on my channel. It was purchased from Etsy and I thought the node was spent and it wasn't going to grow. So I'm happy to see. So I got this plant in November and this is what it looks like now. So hopefully by November, a year after purchasing this plant, I will have like a pretty decent sized plant growing. So yes, I will keep you updated on this little guy. I'm super excited. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I feel like, you know, I do these polls and stuff a lot on my channel, but for those that want in a more like in depth of how I start them, this is how I do it. You know, you can monitor the root system with a clear pot and you know, just keep an eye on it. And I usually end up having to water the moss twice a week. I'll just, as it dries, I just water from the top to moisten it. And that's why it's really important to have like a very aerated mix so that water isn't sitting wet for too long. And you can always like tilt it on your side and water that way, which I tend to do a lot too. Thank you guys for watching. And yeah, I will talk to you guys later.